In this clip, we are going to take a look at the best practices when working with a 3ds Max file for Unity. So, I am not going to be taking a look on exactly how to model component by component because I assume most viewers will already be good with modeling assets inside 3ds Max, but I am going to give you some kind of best practice um, tips on how to prepare a scene for Unity without causing any unexpected results inside the engine. So, first things first, we need to take a look at the scene units. So if we head up to Customize and Unit Setup just here, we need to make sure that inside Display Units, Metric is set to Meters. So, in Unity, one Unity unit is actually one meter. So in this case, by having a meters set in 3ds Max, we're going to have a one-to-one -one relationship between the two packages. So I'm just going to hit OK on that, and that's looking good. So next up, we need to make sure that the poly count is reasonable. So this is just a shell, so this isn't the whole scene. So for example, this shell will be eventually populated with assets and tables and chairs inside Unity, um, I'll show that example right now again. So here we can see this is the final result inside Unity. As we can see, we've got kind of fans here and lights and a wooden feature from the ceiling and the chairs and tables. So this is the full assembly inside Unity. However, our base shell, our base max file, is obviously devoid of those objects. Those objects are in separate max files, and we're going to take a look at those um, in the next couple of clips. However, so the poly count is kind of high considering this is just a shell and that is most likely due to the tiles that I've got over on the counter right here. So I am going to be deploying to a pretty high end machine so I'm not going to be too concerned about representing this surface using geometry. But if you are deploying to a mobile device or a low spec machine, you're going to want to consider replacing geometry like this with a normal map inside Unity. Um, we're going to be looking into authoring normals and normal maps as well in later um, videos, so we're going to be um, figuring that out. But in this case, using geometry for the tiles, in this case, is pretty good. It works quite well, and the visual result is pretty good as well. So it's worth remembering that, remembering that this scene was originally rendered using V-Ray. So this is an, initially a V-Ray scene that's been taken, uh, kind of deconstructed and rebuilt quite simply for Unity. It's also been disassembled and split into multiple 3ds Max files. We're going to be looking at how to structure and manage those assets as well in later lessons. But right now, we'll just make sure that the polygon count is reasonable. So this readout here is extremely useful. So if you just hit 7 on the keyboard, that will be visible. Um, also, if you go to the plus icon in the top left of the viewport, we can go to Configure Viewports, and inside Statistics, we can see that Total Plus Selection is selected. So this is extremely useful. This allows us to understand the full scene uh, polygon counts whilst understanding the selected object's polygon counts as well separately. So for example, I can go ahead and select uh, these tiles over here, and we can see that these tiles actually have 1,500 polygons. Now, Strictly for a games engine, such as Unity, you really wouldn't want a high polygon um, series of tiles like this, but because this is the entirety of the scene, so this is quite a small space, I'm not too worried about the polygon count, because the final count will still be extremely low because of the sheer scale and simplicity of the scene. However, if you are planning on making a larger environment and a more complex scene, you're going to want to consider reducing and just being more careful with the polygon counts, okay? Okay, so next up we need to make sure that our normals are pointing in the correct direction. So again, I'm just going to select these tiles over here and isolate selection. So we can see here that the front of the tiles are being rendered correctly and the back of the tiles we can see straight through to the viewport um, gradient. But that, that's a good thing, like I said, that's what we need, because in Unity, we're only going to be able to render a single-sided face, and that's typically how a real-time environment would render geometry, so we can render single-sided faces only. 
So that just means that we need to make sure that each of our MTDS Max objects has the normal directions pointing in the correct direction. So we need to, um, the easiest way to do this is by going to Control A and selecting everything in the scene. We can then right click and go to Objects Properties. And then I'm going to do this on a by objects basis. You can also adjust display properties on a per layer basis. So we can adjust these layers over here if we want to. But I want every single object to have backface culling. So backface cull will simply not render the backface. So backface culling pretty much simulates how things will look in Unity. So Unity is a single sided kind of backface cull environment, uh, if you want to think of it like that. So that allows us to then view this whole scene as it would be in Unity. So in some cases, you're going to come up to a uh, wall such as this. I'm just going to isolate a selection. And you're going to find that maybe some faces are see-through. And you're going to be able to look straight through. So for example, we can see the back of this wall here is transparent. And that's exactly what we want. But in some cases, you're going to find that um, that isn't the ideal solution. So you're going to be looking straight through a wall that you actually do want to see. So we can fix that by heading over, so we can select the object and head over to the modifier stack and just go to normal. And normal will actually flip um, the normal direction of the wall. So if I just go to flip, we can now see the back of this wall. And if we flip again, we can see the front of the wall, okay? So sometimes um, you're gonna find that only one single face of this wall has been flipped. Now, it's not actually possible to select a single polygon and flip that normal. So you're going to want to go ahead and, for example, um, I'll detach this piece here. So I'm just going to go ahead and detach. So if you have a single face that is actually pointing in the wrong direction, just go ahead and detach that face. So that's now detached. We can then go to the modifier stack and go to normal. And then we can flip that normal uh, on that single polygon. So once it's flipped into the correct direction and you are happy with that, just collapse the stack. Go ahead and reselect the main body of the object. And now we can go ahead and reattach that piece. Now remember that we need to select all vertices around this area. So I'm just going to go to Control A as a simple selection. And we're going to have to weld to a very small threshold. So in this case, I'm going to weld to a 0 0.003 meter threshold. And now that face will be part of the geometry again. Okay, so next up, we need to make sure that the scene is comprised of kind of reasonable chunks. So over on the left-hand side here in the Scene Explorer, you can see that I've actually divided the scene up into layers. Now, I prefer working with layers rather than groups, but you can go ahead and use groups as well if you really want to. But in this case, we can actually uh, hide um, things that we don't want to kind of work with, for example. So I'm going to hide everything apart from major structures. So in that case, I'm going to hide everything apart from the main, main wall set. Now, this allows us to cleanly edit um, various sections, but it also allows us to make adjustments to smaller areas of the scene. So, for example, I want to lower this wall down to be the same height as this guy over here. So I can snap this down to be the same height. Now that's been done, I can re-import that as an FBX into Unity without affecting the terrain, the flooring, the external features, the interior features. So by doing this, we can keep our changes to, and our edits to our model in a kind of a contained manner. This means that I'm not going to affect the, um, the flooring or the exterior features or the interior features inside the engine. So if you continually re-import the same content over and over again, you may eventually run into problems inside Unity. So by organizing this scene in uh, kind of logical sections, avoid any of those sorts of headaches, okay? And lastly, we just need to make sure that each of our objects is broken up into small pieces. So the smaller the so the more pieces that the scene is divided up into, the better. So in Unity, you're actually going to bake in occlusion culling. So occlusion culling basically means that Unity will only render and only keep visible what's in the frustrum, so what's visible through the camera. Everything else will be hidden and not rendered. So this is a massive performance increase. So the only way that that's going to be effective is if the 3ds Max file is effectively divided up. So for example, this window over here should not be connected to a window over here. 
because if I'm in the scene looking towards the counter, I'm only going to want to render what's actually visible. However, if this window was connected to this window, Unity would have to render this one because it because it's obviously connected to this one. So that would be a waste of um, performance. It really makes sense to divide up the geometry into smaller sections to improve performance inside Unity. In the next clip we are going to take a look at how to produce a scene like this from a DWG file. So this scene is a live project that's currently being developed and built in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I have used a blueprint from a architect in a DWG format to produce these wall sets in a nice, um, pretty clean, accurate manner.